Hi, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks Elliot again for the presentation. It's super important topic and uh, learning more about your story was uh, super insightful. Um, yeah, so so maybe I'm, I'm going to share my screen in a second um, to give you an overview. So I'm going to split my presentation into two, two separate presentations. The first one is just going to be about uh, blockchain fundamentals. So I'm trying to teach you or um, educate you a bit about like how blockchains work, why they fundamentally change how we interact as a society. And in the second step, I uh, want to, or in the second presentation, I want to give you a short insight in what we are planning to do um, and how we can add impact, uh, positive impact on, on a technological level to, to the infrastructure of um, the future, I'd say. So uh, maybe if, to my background, I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of Staking Facilities. We've, uh, we run a physical infrastructure for a blockchain. So uh, we have server infrastructure and data centers here in Munich. Um, yeah, but it's not too important for the topic right now. So I'm going to start with uh, kind of the, the innovation shifts in, in the, in, around the internet that we had over the last year. So if you remember like back in the, the first version of the internet, it was not re really too great, but the main revolution was that we had access to information um, through through the internet. So if you remember uh, getting news, getting um, information through through the internet was a great, or was probably one of the biggest changes in, in, in our uh, past history in terms of how information or the transportation of information changed. Um, and the second revolution started around 2005 with obviously uh, mobile phones being able to have internet, internet functionality. It's uh, basically the development of social or in general marketplaces on the internet. So be it Facebook to um, um, basically interact with other human beings, share information about ourselves, being it platforms like Netflix or Amazon to transfer values or uh, sell goods or uh, watch movies, being at Spotify to listen to different music, being at Uber to connect uh, people that drive you around the city. Um, so that basically what, what happened at the second step of the, revolu uh, of the web revolution was the, the creation of platforms to interact on. Um, and the third revolution that is currently happening is, is um, you can probably describe it in, in many ways, but um, the, the difficulty that we had uh, with the internet so far is that we weren't able to transfer unique values through the internet. So um, we had, or we have this huge problem that we can't uh, identify unique objects in the internet. So for example, if I upload a photo and send it to you, we're um email or uploaded on google there's no way for me to prove that 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 was or that i am the owner of that picture because if someone else just uploads the same file the same data there's no way to distinguish the origin of these pictures so we cannot really distinguish um the value uh, and another thing is obviously if, for example if we sell goods via amazon um we never have a digital value that we sell. It's basically still physical objects and the platform just allow us to interact on a P2P basis, but we don't have an object in the internet that we can send around that captures that value. So what blockchain basically provides is a infrastructure that provides trust between different people that want to interact. And it gives us the opportunity to put uh, in, uh, a value in a single object. Um, most of us, we all know that that um, that thing through through cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin has a certain value, and I can it's it's not unique in 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 a sense. We cannot distinguish between different Bitcoins. But uh, if I have a Bitcoin, I can guarantee that it has a certain value. And um, the, the, the important thing is that this is just a concept. Basically, a Bitcoin or a token on a blockchain is just a framework. Uh, and I can put a lot of different things in that, um, in that box, if you want to put it that way. Um, and I can transfer different values through that. Um, some of you might have heard through the NFT uh, space uh, growing really rapidly right now. So um, NFTs are basically just non-fungible tokens. So, so a token that captures, for example, a, a artwork um, 
and I can, as an artist, can guarantee that I'm the first person that actually put out that art, uh, that artwork, and I can put it into a token. But I, I'll, I'll go into that a bit later, or we can talk about it a bit later. Um, so if we look at the the current uh, internet, I'd say, or or the difference between the web and blockchain, um, it's mainly in where value is captured. So if we we look at the current situation with the internet, most of the, the value that is created is not created on the, on the protocol layer, protocol being the internet itself. It's captured in, in the applications on top. So being it Facebook, being it Spotify, being it um, whatever else, Amazon. So, so on, on the protocol layer, we don't have any value that is really created. It's more happening on top of, of the protocol. Um, uh, and, and that really shifts with blockchain. So because on, 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 a, on a blockchain, you can, the value actually really happens on the protocol layer. So being it tokens uh, where you can transfer data or different things with, um, and the, the, the important thing is that the application on top um, can be exchangeable and can be run on different um, um, blockchains, for example, but the value is really captured on the protocol layer, so on the infrastructure layer, and that really shifts how we interact with the technology itself, and it allows us to create new opportunities also for us as private persons to um, profit on that, um, on that shift. So what is a blockchain in itself and what does it consist of? You often heard of words, uh, blockchains, you often heard the word uh, cryptocurrency, but what does it actually mean? So a blockchain itself is basically just a digital ledger. So if you imagine a what is the bank doing right now, it's keeping a ledger of all its customers and their uh uh, what they basically have on their bank account and every transaction gets stored on that ledger. And we have different thousands of different banks that store different ledgers and they basically interact and um, update that ledger with transactions being sent and yeah, transferred. So a blockchain is basically a de decentralized version of, of a, a ledger meaning um, it's basically a, a, a system to keep track on, on transactions, uh, not only transaction in the sense of I transfer money, but I can also transact or transfer data or uh, execute a program through that. And the blockchain itself is basically a, a uh, open and transparent uh, uh, um, ledger where you can see all that information that gets, gets passed through, uh, through that layer and um a very important thing is it's you always have that word pseudo anonymous uh, or or why people think blockchain is perfect for drug dealing or anything so all the information is obviously not not really publicly so you don't see a name behind every transaction but what you can see is basically um you can compare to an iban number of your bank account so you can see every transaction that gets made made through it through a certain address, but not um, who is behind that address. So if someone figures out who is behind an address that allows them to uh, basically get all the information about that people's transaction. Um, the second excuse step, me, and that's- Excuse yeah. me, Julius, would you, would you mind turning the, the video on? Sorry, what? Would you mind turning your video on? Because I think it will be great to- Ah, ah excellent. Sorry, uh, to, okay, sorry to, to- No worries. No worries. Is it working now? Yeah, that was perfect. Cheers. Okay, perfect, great. Um, so, um, I think blockchains are often like like a concept that we that we read upon, but how is it actually operated? So, um, there are physical servers that actually operate the blockchain um, software, if you want to put it that way. So you can imagine like um comparing a blockchain software to something like windows that you run on your computer and on top of your windows software you can install different apps you can pro program different programs you can use uh different applications on top of that and basically node operators in in blockchains operate the software of different blockchains and these softwares differ through different properties for example um, one can be designed to transfer uh, data, another one can be de designed to transfer transactions really, really fast. 
So basically the software of a blockchain is what, um, what differs the, the whole system of, of a blockchain. So um, that's why you also have thousands of different blockchains uh, or cryptocurrencies because um, there are thousands of different ideas on um, how you can design such a software and how um, they differ and what the value that they add to these ecosystems. Um, what, what is a cryptocurrency? Uh, you can imagine the cryptocurrency as kind of the payment system that you need to operate that software compared to a casino if you want to play on a certain table you need certain uh, chips or jetonis to to play on that table cryptocurrency is basically the unique um, payment system that such a software needs to function so each different blockchain um, or not all of them but most of them have a different cryptocurrency being basically the access token to use that software um, and that's how these three interact. So the blockchain itself is, is the, the, the software level and, and the, the data level, I'd say. The nodes are the ones that physically operate the infrastructure and cryptocurrency is the, the needed uh, accounting system or currency that you need to interact with these systems. Um, so if we go into a kind of a practical way uh, or example so be if if i say i'm the user in this in this case and i want to um send a transaction through a blockchain for example the ethereum blockchain i'm going to use some sort of interface and um, start my transaction or um I, i'm going to send my transaction uh, and what what is happening in the second step uh, the transaction gets added into a new block and the new block gets added to the blockchain so you can imagine um, each block of a blockchain being uh, a page in, in a bank ledger where you um, uh, write in all the transactions that currently happen. Then the whole network agrees on these transactions. So basically update the ledger and then they add them to the existing um, uh, ledger. And by that transactions get um, basically where we have a new state of transactions and transfers get uh, enabled. So how do cryptocurrency play a role in that system? So the user um, compared to, to a bank where we pay on a monthly basis and certain fees pays for each transaction that, that he executes. Um, the, the new block that gets created includes these payments that the users do for, for including their transactions. And they also add a so-called block reward. I'll get deeper on that later on. And the people, the node operators that actually um, update the blockchain, the software, that, as I described before, they get paid through the block rewards and um, for basically adding the information to the whole network. So the user needs cryptocurrency to pay for each transaction. Um, and it's really important here why we do, why is, does it say write data? Because it doesn't necessarily need to be just a, a transaction in a sense of I send you money. It can also be the execution of a app that costs uh, a certain amount of money. So if I would use, for example, uh, I, I'm just gonna use, uh, uh, real world examples if i would listen to a music song on on uh, spotify or if i would buy a track that would cost me 20 cents so i would pay 20 cents plus the transaction fees um, and that would be included in that new block and as soon as it gets included i can listen to the new music to the music or i can download it um, so people do want to run the the node infrastructure because um, it they can get a block reward and the transaction fees that people pay for um, and to, to be rewarded. So if we take a look from the outside again, um, how is a blockchain uh, assembled or what are the, the, the most important parts of it? Um, on the bottom layer, we have the physical infrastructure layer. So that's what we actually do. We, we operate these servers, we operate the software of different blockchains. Um, through the coordination of these different infrastructure providers, they're spread across the world. Um, and, and in some networks, there are over a thousand different people that run these uh, servers for each network. Um, 
if they all agree on a new state or new transactions, they get added to the blockchain. And that's what's basically created on top through these different nodes and infrastructure providers. Um, these uh, these uh, uh, then get paid or the, the infrastructure providers then get paid through transaction fees and block rewards that people pay by executing transactions on these networks. So that's basically the cycle of, um, of a blockchain. Um, so uh, the summary, uh, a blockchain is basically a decentralized and immutable um, record of transactions or programs that can be executed. Um, and these programs are executed by node operators across the world. So what do node operators do? They save all the transactions that get put into the blockchain. They save the whole history and they basically check if every transaction is co correct and then add them to, to the blockchain. So now we have this huge problem uh, or how can we guarantee that these node operators actually act honestly? Um, so if we operate infrastructure, why don't I just simply add 1000 Bitcoin to my Bitcoin wallet and add that transaction to, if I put new transaction in, in the blockchain. So, so how can we guarantee, or how can we as users trust these people to operate these, the infrastructure securely? And that's, that's one of the biggest uh, fundamental systems of blockchain and, and the overall uh, topic is called consen consensus mechanisms. So how do we reach consensus in these different networks? How do we pick who is the next one to add a, a transaction to the blockchain? And how can we guarantee that the, the person that is adding the new transaction to the, to the blockchain um, is actually trustworthy or is doing the right thing? And there are different approaches to that topic. The two biggest ones that you've probably heard of is proof of work, which is um, what Bitcoin is currently using. Um, the consensus mechanism be, be behind Bitcoin is called proof of work. And then we have uh, the probably largest group of projects are currently using proof of stake, uh, which is also where we provide infrastructure, what we provide infra infrastructure for. Um, so these are two different mechanisms, how these networks achieve consensus and also um, provide security um, and uh, basically a system of checks and balances in these networks. So going back, we have a new block in this example. And now we need to, to decide who of these node operators that we have here can add the new transaction to the, to the blockchain and gets the block reward and the payment. Um, and there are different um, systems. Um, the first democratic approach, which is um, pretty, uh, probably you all know as well, is proof of authority. So for example, in proof of authority, we don't have an open system. So we, we cannot add as many nodes as we want. We have a restricted number of nodes. In this case, um, we have uh, these nodes that we have right here and every participant in, of these uh, operators gets one vote. So basically, um, if we add a new block, we just shift one by one by one by one. All of them have the same voting power if we if we want to put it that way. So um, votes or votes in a sense of um, um, adding the, a new block to the trend or deciding who who can add a new block to the um, to the blockchain gets uh, perfectly distributed manually. So we can really imagine it in a, um, now it's my turn, now it's your turn, really passing that by everybody has the same voting power. That would be proof uh, of authority. Um, difficulty is as soon as we open up the network, it gets uh, uh, really tricky. And um, also based on, on hardware, that, that is a system that works really well in, in, in the human, in a human um, system with, with humans, but is really difficult on a technical level because we have on, on an infrastructure level, certain um, yeah, specifications that really differ and make, make a, a huge difference in how uh, the, the infrastructure is operated and then makes it difficult to weight um, uh, the infrastructure on the same level. So that would be 
a proof of authority. Everybody gets the same power. Everybody gets the same votes. Everybody adds the same amount of blocks to the blockchain in, in general. Um, so the, the uh, Nakamoto protocol or Bitcoin um, uh, protocol came up with these and, and, and that's basically the, the first consensus mechanism that was published with the proof of work um, system. So what, what happens in, in proof of work is basically that the system says we have this uh, 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 in, in, in proof of work, the new block contains a mathematical equation and whose computer solves the equation first can add the new block to the blockchain. So if I stack up my computer hardware, and in this case, we have a fellow here with three servers in that example, obviously he can have, his computers probably uh, can, in the same amount of time, he can solve three puzzles compared to the one who has only one server who can only work, uh, solve one puzzle. So depending on the hardware that I provide, and also in the same sense, energy that I pay for and, and um, um, money that I have to spend on energy and server, the more blocks I am allowed to add to the blockchain. So if you look at the, the example, we see nodes that have two servers that can add 11.1% to the network. We have nodes that have only one server, they can add 5.5%. Uh, so in, in proof of work, um, adding blocks to the blockchain gets uh, or is distributed by how much energy or uh, basically computing power am I providing to the network? How many of these puzzles can I solve to add? Uh, uh, can I solve? And then basically based on that, um, the blockchain decides who gets rewarded um, the most. The, the 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 next system, which is proof of stake, is is pretty comparable to a stock system. So it basically says if I own the most, you can compare it. If I own the most stocks in a company, I have the most. Uh, I ca I can have the most influence on on decisions, obviously, with my vote. And in in proof of stake, it's it's the nodes are all the same in terms of of the infrastructure. So we don't have. Um, someone with 20 servers, uh, all of them are operating the same infrastructure, but they differ in how much money they put on their servers and, and put on is basically uh, in, in be, or means basically um, locking away to the network. So basically as a security, you have to put your stake in the network. Um, and the more stake you put into or on your node, um, the, the uh, more new blocks you are allowed to add to, to the blockchain. So if I add three euros, um, you, you have the numbers right here. So it's really depending on how much security in terms of money am I providing to the network. And therefore the more money I provide or the more money I put at, at risk, I'd say I'll, I'll come to that in a second, um, the more blocks I can add to the blockchain. Um, so, how can I still, we still have that problem that how can I be sure that the people that are operating the hardware are doing it in, in the right way or are not trying to cheat on the system. And um, in proof of work, and that's why, where the whole system kind of developed was the idea was, okay, um, here is my, 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 my net profit, I'm at zero. Before I'm allowed to add new blocks to a blockchain, I have to invest a lot of money in server hardware and energy to actually have the servers compute uh, these mathematical equations and to solve them. So before I get any reward, I have to have a lot of expenses being server hardware, being energy, and if I do my work correct and the network approves what I've done, all the other node operators say, okay, the transactions you included are actually correct. I, I check them with the last uh, transactions that were added and you updated the transactions correctly. Um, then they digitally approve to your transaction or basically give an okay in a digital way. And then afterwards, I'll get the reward from the blockchain, which is 
larger than what I've spent in the first place on energy costs. So my profit is basically that part here on top, which is over zero. And the risk that I have in, in proof of work, if I try to include a false transaction, the network would say, or other validators or infrastructure providers would say, hey, sorry, we checked your transactions. There's something wrong. The transaction where you add yourself 1000 Bitcoin doesn't really exist uh, before. So these thousands of Bitcoin are created out of thin air. You're trying to cheat the systems. They, they won't approve your, um, your transaction. And what basically happens is that, that you have these huge costs in the beginning and you will not get the uh, proof of work reward. So in the end, and that's really a, a um, um, game theory, uh, game theoretic model here. You, you have a lot of expenses in the beginning and you only get paid if you act honestly in the networks. And therefore you can secure um, that all the players are acting correct in these networks. Um, so why proof of stake or what's the difference? So um, a lot of people just realized, okay, the technology itself is super interesting, but um, the huge energy consumption with these models is is a huge problem. And also um, it doesn't really scale that well, because if you think of a global economy, that would mean we just have to increase our servers or computing power on, on basically a daily basis just to solve these. And that's what actually most of the energy is consumed for in, in proof of work or in Bitcoin is just servers trying to solve these mathematical problems to be the first to get that reward. So the computing power is not even used for actually executing transactions or anything, or actually doing uh, executing the, the the blockchain software. It's it's used for determine who's de determining who is the first to add these and and basically get the reward. So people realized um, that's something that that cannot scale, and it's also really really bad for our ecosystem and our uh, climate so they thought of ways and how can we ensure and if we go back to the game theoretic model how can we ensure that these people add um, the right transactions to the system uh, or, but still if they don't we have a way to punish them for that and if we go back to that model um, in proof of stake if you interact in staking it's it's not the case in all of the systems but in, in, in a lot of them you have to put uh, or you, you basically have to deposit these 20 euros to the network so as long as you're participating in staking and getting rewards these 25 3 10 euros are locked away in in the in the protocol so um, depending on how much money I, I deposit in my infrastructure on my node, the more blocks I can add, but also the higher risk uh, I have that these uh, that these that the stake can and that's called in, in in proof of stake it's it's called slashing. You can imagine it as a bank deposit or as a deposit. Uh, and if if in this case we would try to do something wrong, um, the protocol can basically get back to the money that we deposited right here and uh, take away parts of that depending on how severe the, the uh, or how, how uh, bad our behavior was to the network. So the worst, worst behavior is a so-called double spend. So if I try to execute the same ex transaction twice to the network, uh, that's, that's the worst thing that you could do on a technical perspective. And then in some networks, the whole 20 years that I deposited can get uh, slashed or destroyed. So in this sense, I'm current, completely abstracting the physical uh, execution of computing power. And the only computing power that we execute on our service uh, is just the, the computing power that you need to add transactions to, to the blockchain. And uh, in the game theory, the, the, the risk that we have is that the, the, the stake that we put into the network can get slashed. We still have the same profit mechanisms, staking rewards and uh, or uh, staking rewards are basically transaction fees and block rewards combined. Um, so if we as a validator would try to include a wrong, false transaction, a part of our stake can get slashed. Um, so to sum up the advantages of proof of stake, it's really 
89, uh, 98 to 99% lower in terms of energy consumption. So uh, we, um, environmental is, or environment is a really important topic for us. So we, we try to, uh, we, we did an offset of our uh, um, CO2 emissions uh, for the last year and it was below one ton. So it, it's really, we, we operate like four to five racks, just single server racks in, in a data center compared to, these huge Bitcoin mines, it's it's nothing. And you have to imagine that this works on a global uh, uh, network. And the thing is, in the, in the proof of stake systems, the infrastructure doesn't necessarily scale with users. So you don't need to add new servers every time you get one, two, three, four million new users. It's it's actually really more about resources that net, the networks actually consume. So you're more adopting to um, actual usage of the software that, rather than um, adding software to to add new blocks to the blockchains. Um, so economics are kind of built in because we as a validator have to have these tokens of the networks and are therefore aligned with uh, more aligned with uh, the development of the ecosystem as a infrastructure provider in um, proof of work, I am technically still somehow aligned to 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 the network, but um, I don't have to buy any bitcoins in advance to to be a Bitcoin node operator. So I can just I get paid in Bitcoin, but I can sell them immediately, and then I have really really little exposure to the ecosystem itself. Um, and it's also way faster. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, one second, Julius. A bit conscious about yeah. the time. Uh, we passed uh, seven minutes from from this part of the session, so I want to make sure yeah. we have enough time for the second yeah. one. And, and yeah, the I think other... the second one is a bit shorter. So it's, ah, super. It's, it be... yeah, the other one is uh, I wanted to prompt that we have some questions from the audience. One of one of yeah. them. So I don't know how you want to tackle them. Happy um, to... Please feel yeah. free to to ask anytime. Uh, I think okay. it makes more Very sense. Good. I was, I was um, not uh, sure, so I tried to find the space. So there is one question yeah. from Pawau here. I think it's very, very appropriate for what you were talking. How are these node operators chosen for each yeah. new block transaction? So maybe you can. In, yeah. Yeah. So in, in proof of work, it uh, they, because, they get. Uh, yeah, because yeah. What, what the concern is, I think that's perhaps good to close, is that what if one company owns it all? Yeah. Um, that's a really good point. That's the so for for Bitcoin, it's pretty simple. It's um, um, basically who who uh, solves the medical mathematical problem the first. It's I'm not gonna go deep into the technology because then there are some difference. But in in general, I'd say who solves the puzzle first um, is the first who add the new block. In proof of stake, you can imagine it a bit like a lottery. So if I have 30% of the stake, my name gets put into the lottery 30 times. If I have 5%, that my name gets put in five times. And then you have a lottery system where a name get picked, gets picked, and the randomness basically depicts uh, or selects who is the next one to add the new block to the blockchain. Um, the huge problem, and that's totally correct for proof of stake, is that uh, how, how can we make sure that not one person owns all of the stake and then Basically, we have one central entity um, uh, running the, or operating these networks. And uh, in fact, there are many different approaches to how to solve these problems. Um, for us as an infrastructure provider, it's actually a huge part of our mission to make these networks as decentralized as, as possible. So that's really also a shift in an economical uh, way how we interact so we are trying more with other validators we try to help each other out because um the more good validators you have the secure the network itself is the more decentralized it is the more users you'll attract because they see okay it's a really decentralized network um so so for example in in the solana uh, blockchain ecosystem we are one of the largest uh, validators i think fourth biggest validator and we are providing or we are uh, operating a website called Sol Solana Beach. I can actually share that in a second um, um, where you can see all the different uh, validators and what we are trying to do to incentivize people to use infrastructure uh, providers that are smaller is that we don't show the top 
19 validators in this case and uh, basically uh, try to make people aware that these people above could potentially, if they would conclude, they could um, halt the network if they would act together. So that's just a practical way, I'd say. Um, there are some built-in mechanics if we go really deep into the technology um, that, that um, provide mechanics to avoid this. There are the, the foundations of different networks really, for example, from the, the Solana Foundation, the only goal that they've set themselves is to decentralize stake. So they uh, develop their own software just to spread their, their stake through the many as many validators as possible so there are many economic incentives in these networks again to try to spread the stake as as much as possible um but it is definitely one of the tricky questions for proof of stake where you have in, i'd say in, in proof of work you have the energy consumption problem in proof of stake it's really trying to get the networks as decentralized as possible Excellent. i hope that that helps there was another one from Julius. Yeah. Uh, he said he needed some blockchain system for file sharing. So yeah. no one can copy and share without permission of uh, from user and receiver. So I'm yeah. Not sure. um, there, if there is one, um, there are different networks. I think Filecoin, Filecoin is, is one of these. There are different blockchains that are really focusing on transferring data. Um, for me, that's also a topic that probably gets more important on the layer two. So if we blockchain itself is the infrastructure layer on, on, on the basis, the, the on top of that could be some layers that en enable tra uh, transferring data. Um, and that would be an application on top of a blockchain again. Um, but there are definitely several projects that are trying to solve these, these problems already. Um, I think Fo Filecoin is one of them. Um, Okay, now we solve your question, uh, Ivan. If not, uh, feel free. Data to... scare IO. Yeah, that can actually be true. Yeah. Is puzzle an analogy for something? What about each work trying to solve? Um, puzzle is an so so imagine like a huge complex mathematical equation, and um, uh, each computer each tries to solve the equation. It's a really complex, uh, non-human readable equation so it's a really complex puzzle and um with in proof of work uh um the, the puzzle gets difficult with every new uh uh validator that's get that gets onboarded to 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 the network so the puzzle gets diff more difficult with every new operator and therefore the energy consumption goes up as well so it's kind of a uh that loop as well if you want to put it that way um so yeah um you can still include easy things as purchasing things so maybe an outlook for for the future how do you interact with blockchains probably in the future you wouldn't even know that you use a blockchain it's more that the base layer of your transactions for example with a bank or an applications that you use get settled through a blockchain and on top you'll just use you will just see euro and have a, maybe a connection with your bank account a lot of banks are working on uh, uh, integration. Um, a, a purchase or a transaction or, uh, is not viewed as a block, it's viewed as a transaction. A, a bunch of different purchases, so let's say 20, 30, 30 40 different purchases are then uh, seen, if you put them together on one sheet, they're seen as a block and each single one can be a transaction or a purchase in that sense. Okay, I'll, I'll try to speed up a bit and, and finish my first presentation and then um because i see we only have 15 minutes um so sum up proof of stake way less energy consumptions economics built in faster transaction times um proof of work scales with hardware computing power that's what i said right now um proof of stake scales with stake the more stake i have the more um blocks i can add the more hardware i have the more blocks i can add in proof of work um there's one yeah screen oh i'm not sharing my screen that's that's a good point thank you uh, so that's where i went so i just what i said is but proof of work scales with hardware computing power you can see my screen now right I yes so. correct. 
Perfect. Uh, proof of stake scales with stake on my um, uh, note. Maybe one um, important thing, and that's also why we are here. Um, you don't have to operate the um, infrastructure to um, stake your tokens. You can also delegate your tokens to a node operator. So that's basically what we are offering as a um, as a service. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do this rather quick. Um, so if we have token holders that all have different tokens in, the, in this scenario, so you can basically delegate them to a node operator, for example, us. Um, and we would not have physical control over your, your token. And that's a really important point. So we, we are not controlling or we don't have physical control over your asset. We just, uh, your just stake just gets added to, to our um, stake. Um, so if you want to decide you want to undelegate or do something else with your, your tokens, you can always do that. We have no physical control over your token. Um, if uh, therefore our stake obviously gets higher, we can add more, we, we are allowed to add more blocks to the blockchain. Um, if we add a new block to the to the blockchain, we get a, 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 a we get the block rewards. In this case, in this example, it, it'd be 5.5 SOL. So if we have a commission fee of, I don't know, in this case, 10% each, it's not completely correct in the sense, but let's assume it's correct. Uh, each delegator, if we have five delegators, gets one SOL. And the commission in this case for us would be 0 0.5 sol for providing the physical in infrastructure. So you have these models where you separate the, the technical infrastructure operation from owning the tokens and participating in, in these networks. If you have a professional node operator where you delegate your tokens to, uh, to you still get these block rewards and transaction fees, but you pay a bit of the, one, of the money that you make in commission fees. Um, Maybe one last thing that's really important, and that's the last slide for that. How do block rewards look like right now? So uh, imagine we, we have here the uh, Cosmos blockchain. Um, a new block uh, includes four new atom or four atoms that, that in, in block rewards, how are they, uh, what do they consist of? Let's say in this case, one, one atom is a transaction fees. Um, and then uh, you also have, and that's a, a design mechanism that was chosen just especially in the, for, for early stages of a network. Obviously, if you start a network um, um, from scratch, you won't have billions or millions of transactions on a daily basis because you just need to onboard the users. So new cryptocurrency or new blockchains often incentivize operating the hardware by creating new cryptocurrencies with each block. Um, and that's some, some sort of inflation. And in and, and most of the proof of stake networks, um, there are strict designs how the inflation decreases over time. So uh, less newly minted cryptocurrencies. And um, the assumption is that obviously over time, transaction fees go up and um, you don't need the substitution and uh, artificial inflation um, through newly minted cryptocurrencies. So that's kind of the, the idea behind uh, crypto uh, block rewards. You always have transaction fees and in, in most of the times newly minted cryptocurrencies. So you have basically a real reward APY through transaction fees. And then you have some inflation dilution with uh, new networks and that together gets you the nominal reward per year that you get on your assets that you stake.